And now, a word from Infirmary Media. Hey kids, I'm the Reverend Johnny Blumpkin, and with me here today is my friend, Ivy. <laughs> I'm not feeling the enthusiasm in your answer. I do it that way every single time. I mm. gotta keep it consistent. If you could just talk a little bit louder, oh my God. then I wouldn't have to do so much amplification in post-edit. Is that better? Yeah, but you don't have to whisper the whole time because Bryce is going to come in his jeans. Okay. Before we came in here, I showed you something. You showed me a lot of things. I showed you something very specific that was on top of the washing machine. Oh, that. Uh, yeah. Describe it for the audience. This is going to sound really bad. You're going to have me describe that. Yeah, why not? It's a pair of child's underwear. Pocahontas, right? Yeah. Pocahontas? Yeah. Pocahontas themed underwear that had a nice skid mark in it. No, several skid marks. <laughs> yeah, it looked like some, like it was a sharp mark. A sharp mark, for well, sure. They're it, my stepdaughters. Oh. And if I was to describe that skid mark, I would say they looked like there was a multiple car pileup. In the victory lap lane. Yeah. Or maybe like an itch gone wrong. She apparently saw nothing wrong with just leaving them on the bathroom floor <laughs> after she took a shower, put on her pajamas, and went to bed. At least she showered. She didn't scrub the shit out of her poopy underpants. No, but she showered the shit out of her butt crack. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. Maybe. She's not the most cleanly of little girls, little E. Poor thing. Yeah. So now the underwear sit there, and I keep telling her, you have to clean them, you have to clean them, and she keeps putting it off. I would put it off, too. All she's got to do is go and get them wet and put some hand soap and rub them together. I wouldn't want to clean, the, like, I would just throw it away. Like, I don't want to clean the shit out of my underwear. Probably. So. Probably. Instead, now it looks like Pocahontas sings with the one color of the wind. Just the one. Which is uh, mocha brown. That's a good description, yeah. Do you have a lot of experience with weird stains in your panties? This says nothing about your level of cleanliness. Just, I know stains happen because girls have two holes down there, I've been told. Yeah. And things happen. Usually there's two, yeah. Um, uh, I don't get skid marks. I don't think I've had, I mean, definitely in the past, probably around her age, I definitely did. It's pretty common that age. Can yeah. I tell you that the other two, Juice and Chi Chi, none. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad they know how to wipe correctly. Unless you count two weeks ago, when uh, Chi Chi had a oh. series of wet toots. Yeah, she had that stomach thing. Right, that was when she was sick. It was coincidentally around the time I released my parody of Baby Shark called Greasy Shark. That's bad. <laughs> Inshallah, last night went to bed thinking I'm alright. Woke up the next morning with a bubble gut. Felt a rumble in my tummy, started feeling kinda yucky. Gently bit my lip and lifted my right cheek. Let one fly without a care, but it wasn't only air. Chunks and fluid found the way out of my bum. Then things took a messy turn Felt a warm and runny burn Running down my legs and then onto the rug Greasy shark do 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 Greasy shark do 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 Warm beef gravy suddenly filled up my shorts Gamble then I took a chance Ended up ruining my pants Rolled the dice and let one fly and pay the price 
Now I'm crouching in the shower, throbbing with all of my power to eliminate the stains of my regret. There was more substance and sound, the proof's right there on the ground, putting in my underwear, the sopping wet. <sighs> so, I told her, because she shit her underwears right before bed, and I had to scrub them, I'm like, if you go to bed, if you feel like you're going to toot, get out of bed and go to the toilet. <laughs> so at 2.30 in the morning, I awoke to her kind of crying. I'm like, what's wrong? She's like, I sharded. <laughs> I had an accident in my underwear. I'm like, why? I told you to go to the bathroom. I couldn't find the light switch. <laughs> like, you've lived here all your life. How do you not know where the fucking switch is? Well, I couldn't see where the bathroom door was to open it to turn on the light in the bathroom, and I didn't want to turn on the hallway light because I was afraid it would get you in your eyes and wake you up and you'd be mad. <laughs> wake you up to her shitting And I just said, agenda. you know what? Next time, just turn on the goddamn light and don't shit your pants. Okay. Yeah. You don't need to yell at her for shitting her pants. <laughs> well, here's the funny thing is then there was a part two to this. Okay. Where I'm like, okay, well, let's go clean your underwear. I already changed them. Where are your poopy ones? They're in my room. <laughs> she took them off. She left them on the fucking carpet. Thankfully, wet toot side up. Yeah, that's always, I mean, that's usually how they come off. But sometimes, sometimes you do like a little kick. You like kick it away. Sometimes they flip head side down. Because you're so disgusted with yourself. Like, look what I did in there. And you just flick them. No, I just kind of like... It's just a little more extra, a little more dramatic doing it that way. Like that jockey commercial from the late 80s and early 90s where they sing the song, You Make Me Feel Like a Natural Woman. Yes. And the women dance around in like these half shirts and like high cut, high rise underwears. That sounds exactly like it. So Little E's underwear with the poo poo skids mm -hmm. is like the second incident with a pair of underwear on the bathroom floor i've had recently okay the other one i went into the bathroom and i was taking a shit nice and there was a pair of panties by my feet okay they were my wife's okay yeah i was gonna say because hmm. she had taken a shower after work and just left her clothes there fine whatever i get it yeah but i go to move them and as i move them i'm like oh wow okay because there was quite a blood spot in them. Yeah, it happens. It almost looked like she miscarried on the drive home. Sometimes it's rough. First day, it's rough. So now every time I see a pair of panties on the floor in my house... You have to look? I kind of get this weird twinge like, oh no, like I have PTSD from yeah. seeing the clots and the skids. And I just like... In my head runs that warning they play on the news before they show you something really terrible. Oh, yeah. Like, the following video will contain graphic scenes that may be disturbing to some viewers. And that's how I feel every time I see a pair of my daughter's or my wife's underpants on the floor. Yeah, I mean, you should probably get used to it now. All the girls are pretty much, I mean, they're pretty close in age. You're just, it's going to be back to back to back. Oh, yeah, we're we're definitely going to be proud supporters of the Crimson Tide football team around here. Yeah, it's a, it's a good start. It's a good start. Yeah, no, that happens. No matter how long you've had it, it, just, it happens. You just wake up one morning, you're like, fuck! No, yeah, sometimes you don't know it's going to happen. Like, it's, it's there's a regular period and there's an irregular period. The irregular ones, they just sneak up and show you who's boss first day, <laughs> second day, third day. Played play a prank on you the fourth day and then slap you again on the fifth so day one is just like Bruh! yeah sometimes like for most women it's like niagara falls but like somebody had murdered somebody at the top mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. it's like that bloody vaginas i've seen a few in my day it's a lot to maintain i'm sure you have because i am not scared of those you're scared you're scared of bloody panties though I don't want to see the blood-soaked crotch of a pair of panties. I want the allure that you're this <laughs> beautiful flower that doesn't have 
these black wilt marks on your petals. Didn't didn't even watch the births of your kids? Fuck no. Why? You think I want to see the beast get cleaved open twice? That's actually really cool. I mean, Is it's it? it's not safe, and they could die, so it's very, like, intense, but, like, overall, they're just pulling out organs, setting them next to you, you're awake, pull out the baby, leave you open, go take the baby, make sure it's breathing, and then come back to put everything back in there and sew you up. How many C-sections have you watched? None, like, personally. I just, it's yeah. something I do on my spare time. Uh, okay. You just yeah. go on the internet and, like, C-section videos. Yeah. The same way I'm, like, vomit porn. Oh, yeah. I don't know if that's the same, but... Or anal fisting. Yeah, no, not the same. Not the same. I don't do that for pleasure. It's just curiosity. Because when I had my uh, surgery for my hernia repair, I tried nice. to watch a video of what they were going to do to me. Yeah. Couldn't do it. Oh. I can see blood and guts. That's fine, mm-hmm. but I'm picturing that that's me, and it was just like, no, I don't. I would rather not know what they're gonna do to my insides like that. I shit. want, I want to know everything. Like I want to know every detail. That's why when uh, the juice was born, one, they almost didn't even get me in the fucking room in time because <laughs> they gave me the scrubs, and they said, okay, we'll come get you in a few minutes when we're ready for you. And then they're about to pull the baby out, and the beast goes, "Are you gonna go get him?" They're like, "Oh shit, sorry." <laughs> so her mom had to go, quick, get in there. The baby's almost out. So yeah. I come in, and then they're like, oh, here's the baby. Like, I got their photo finish. Right. And uh, I like to stay north of the sheet. Most men do, yeah. And then when little Bug was born, I also stayed north of the sheet. Hmm. Because that was natural? or Yeah, it came yeah. out of her vagina. Perfect, yeah. Her Her guts are still intact. Good. That's... It's a good thing to have. But I don't want to see your vagina while a baby's coming out of it. It's definitely an interesting... That I have seen. That... In person? Kind of. You saw a video of someone you knew's birth? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. It's more of like a a live live video, FaceTime type deal. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (sighs) Quick, get on the Facebook Live and show everybody my vagina splitting open like the Predator alien's face when he took his mask off and roared at Arnold Schwarzenegger. Pretty close. Like, if you don't catch it um, before the, like, baby's head rips anything, Mm -hmm. they'll, like, cut it. Yeah, the episiotomy. Yeah, sometimes they, like, majority of the time you have to, like, get stitches. Yeah. Hence why every guy makes the joke, oh, did you throw an extra stitch in there? (laughs) Right, because, you know, it's the opening that's yeah. loose, not the inside of the vaginal cavity from all those dicks she took before you. And that doesn't actually do it either. Um, mm. um, Female comedian Ali Wong would argue otherwise that she took a lot of dicks in her 20s, and she's a little bit loose in there. And that's why when she discovered anal sex, she was like, <gasps> it was like Aladdin. She thought it was a whole new world, because she had this tight hole that people could plug. I just lifted that from her baby cobra stand-up routine. Come I on. Know. That's why I'm... Empirical evidence from a woman herself. With glasses, not unlike your own. Yeah. They're pretty similar. No. No, I don't think, I don't think it's right. I don't think, it, I think she was just... I think she was going with the, the whole act. I'm pretty sure. I've been inside of women pre-baby and post-baby. Yeah, you have. You got an uphill argument trying to convince me of otherwise. This is like an episode of uh, Louder with Crowder where he goes to some school and he's like, rape culture doesn't exist. Convince me otherwise. Or change my mind. Yeah. That's his thing, the Change My Mind series. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're not going to change my mind. I've been inside of different vaginas at different stages. You have not. No. I mean, I really can't get inside like that. Well, you can, but you don't have as many... uh, Feelers? You you have nerves in your fingers, but apparently not as many as are in a penoir. No. Yeah, no. They're pretty sensitive. They are. Yeah. Especially if you talk mean to them. Be like, hey, penis, I don't like the way you're winking at me right now. Like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. They get sad, slump up, tuck on, or what? Or the worst one is, uh, I have a headache. <laughs> and they're just like, <laughs> they just go into hiding. Like a turtle back into its shell. Sounds about right. This whole episode's basically based around gross stuff and random thoughts I've had recently. These are these are recent ra- random thoughts? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But if I'm tying it to something from the past, 
Back in episode 9, in the infancy of the show, we did an episode all about periods and period sex. Nurse mm-hmm. Ashley and I, who was the female on the show most often before she got too busy and then I drafted you in the position. Yeah. And yeah. you're much younger and have no kids, so it, night and day difference. Yeah, huge difference. So I thought up this idea for a horror movie by, okay. for a guy that's just driven insane by the fact that his girlfriend only feels comfortable letting him have sex with her when she's on the rag. Interesting. And it drives him nuts because he just wants a regular, unsloppy piece of ass. <laughs> okay. And he becomes the killer known as Blood Balls. Yeah. That's it's a good thought. It's a good uh, good start. I feel like you might need a little more <laughs> to it. No. That's all it takes these days. No, it Jeepers doesn't. Jeepers Creepers. There's just like a scarecrow bat monster that flies around killing people. What's its motivation? Nobody knows. He just kills people. But that, like, that's the that's the suspense part of it. We know why he's killing everybody because he just wants regular sex. Which I don't understand why he just doesn't go get another girlfriend. Don't try to fill in my plot holes. There's, there's it's pl- a horror comedy. <laughs> like that's what I mean. You still have to have, you know, a beginning, middle, and end, and some sense of it. Some resolution. Make sh- make people maybe come back for more. Come back for more. Or come back for less. <laughs> <laughs> whatever you fancy. Nurse Ashley suggested a sequel, or maybe I, either way, an idea for a sequel came up involving uh, butt sex. Okay. And then uh, he'd be mud balls. All right, I see a, I see a pattern here. <laughs> I don't think we should continue it because there's only a, a couple more holes if you want to count them all. And the next one is gonna be what barf balls like. I hadn't thought of that, but that's a good one. That's so gross. She gagged so hard and vomited on my tea bag. Yeah, like, that's just, oh, that's bad. That happened to Reese Hartfeld. Who's that? That's Reese Hartfeld from Genre Treason. He's a rapper. Oh. And a friend of mine. And a friend of yours. Yes. Nice. So because all this period talk reminded me of yes. Blood Balls, I yeah. figured I'd finally get around to making that trailer for Blood Balls. Oh, so you, you have it? Not yet. Okay. (laughs) But by the time this goes to air, I will. A man driven insane by a woman who wouldn't let him near her cunt unless it was spewing red hatred. Driven to kill because all he wanted was a regular piece of ass. He is... Blood balls. And it's just, you're just going to like post that on there too, or? I will, it's not a video. It's all audio. Because they do movie trailers on the radio sometimes. I suppose, yeah. So I have a lot of work to cut out for me to write this and practical sound effects. Yeah, you got got a lot cut out for you. And bloody dick puns. Well, bloody ball puns. Yeah. Yep, that sounds like you got a lot on your plate. A lot of bloody dick balls. Blood balls. What up, Ninja? You're listening to Blumkin and Friends. And because gross stuff inspires me. Yeah. And now, story time. A few years back, I was dating this girl. Okay. And uh, before we had intercourse. Very professional of you. Yes. Nice. She's like. Oh, by the way, I'm just I'm just getting done with my period. I'm like, I don't give a shit. Okay. Fucking hey, you're team already pl- wet. Perfect. Yeah, team player. All right. So when we were done, like I always do, she went to go, you know, squeeze out the cum into the toilet. Yeah, the ritual. And then, just shaking my head. <laughs> shaking my head because you say that's so laissez-faire and I'm also a father <laughs> to little girls. Anyway. Preparing you. So I went to go wash my dick in the sink like yeah. I always do. You can reach the sink? The main bathroom. It's a little lower? It was like right at perfect height. It's like a bidet. Well, I could like lean up against it and my balls would rest on it. It was that high. That's a little gross. It's not. Okay. Also, I used to pound out into that sink sometimes when I didn't want to wake everybody up. Nice. So I know you've washed your hands in there, but don't worry. I washed the cums down the drain. I would hope so. So 
I go to wash my balls and mm-hmm. then I, I turn on the light because I saw something. I'm, I'm doing it by by nightlight. Yeah, nightlights. Because who wants to stare themselves in the bloody lunches? I, yeah, it's not a cute look. And I didn't expect there to be anything more than a slight trace. Why would Why would you think that? Because she said, I'm almost done. I'm at the <laughs> tail end of my period. You remember what I told you where it's <laughs> smack, smack, smack. Just kidding. We're done. And then smack again. Let me just flood you again. Ruin every perfect pair of underwear that you own. So yeah, but guys, we don't think that, that. We're not like, oh, man, I hope she's right. And we don't get a surprise. Nope, it's surprise. So what I saw when I turned that light on was a <laughs> fucking clot. Yeah. On the underside of my cock, like on my sack. Yeah, it happens. It inspired it... me to write a song. Oh, Please don't sing for me. That I will also be debuting in this episode. Okay, good. The song is called Clots on My Ball Bag. Yeah, you just kind of like threw the whole song <laughs> right there. Is that the lyrics? No, All of them? No. Okay. No, it's a sweet-ass rap song. Okay. It's not like I'm singing. I'm crooning about her menses on me. Yeah, I'd hope not. What do you have against my singing? Um, Not much, considering Kate- not much. Caitlin's my roommate. <laughs> yeah, I can carry a tune. That's the difference. No, <laughs> you guys are probably hand in hand. No, oh, no, she's... I'm fucking awesome at singing. She thinks she's awesome too. Okay, but did you hear the notes that I hit in my song, Shocked? <laughs> You've heard my material. Right? I have, yeah. Okay, <laughs> I, I hit some pretty good notes for someone with no classical singing training. <laughs> no classical singing training. Okay, yeah. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. The following is a world premiere of the new Reverend's Johnny Blumpkin song Clots on My Ball Bag. Slowly but surely a red river flows But this blood loss ain't coming out her nose My girlfriend's period is here for a visit Hot damn, that means it's blowjob week, isn't it? Bump the brakes, there's no need for alarm You can dive right in and won't cause any harm No need for foreplay before penetration The chassis's already full of rosy lubrication Lay down a towel so you don't stain the sheets And get ready to plunge full shaft into the men's seas Reach apex Breathe deep and let it go and make strawberry shortcake in her net and hole. Inside it's extra sensitive, drown in the passion of the sound of waves in a Red Sea crash in. Hard slam and sniz while my girl's on the rag. I got clots on my ball bag, clots on my ball bag, thick and dark red. Clots on my ball bag, cause the ovum was dead. Clots on my ball Stuck bag, to my nutsack, with crimson drag marks across her butt crack. Clots on my ball bag, 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 clots on my motherfucking ball bag, bitch. No babies this way. Call me the Hope Slayer, love when her vaginal walls start shedding layers. Spending my time at the Red Roof Inn, pull your tampon out and let the games begin. Ask me no questions, I'll tell you no lies. I love to leave my bloody mark on your inner thigh. Some guys are sickened by the thought, I promise I ain't. Down to spend my free time steady stirring the paint. Back labs of coagulum on my balls and shaft, dude. Humming red, red wine on my way to the bathroom sink. Washing my junk like it ain't no thing. Using baby wipes to clean off the victory stains. Flow's almost gone, my scrotum mark is otherwise. But I won't cry foul, more gutter than those other guys. Going balls deep while she's still on the rag. I got clots on my ball bag, clots on my ball bag, thick and dark red, clots on my ball bag, cause the ovum was dead, clots on my ball stuck bag, stuck to my nutsack, with crimson drag marks across her butt crack, clots on my ball bag, 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 clots on my motherfucking ball bag, bitch!
You're listening to Blumpkin and Friends. We've reached the point in the show when it's time to play a game. All right. To my knowledge... Oh, uh, no, no, you've played this game before. Okay. You'll be playing BS Trivia. All right. Oh, Your yeah. previous score out of the ten questions was a four. There yeah. you are on the board. You're the third contestant I had in this game. <laughs> if my nearsightedness doesn't deceive me, that does say your name, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's time to play Bullshit Trivia on Blumpkin and Friends. Anyway, ten questions. All right. There are answers. There aren't answers. And if you don't know, I might give you half a point for creativity. Okay. Question number one. Spell carbonate. C-A-R-O-B-O-N-N-A-T-E. Jesus Christ, do you have a stutter? Could you, could you give me that one more time? I have to, like, spell it. Like, I like, like visualize carbonate. it. I have to visualize it in my head, okay? It's not a stutter. I didn't stutter anything. <laughs> Pieced it like my teacher taught me how to do in fifth grade i do have the ability to replay how you did it the first time to <laughs> prove that it sounded like you had a stutter <laughs> okay c-a-r-b-o-n-n-a-t-e that's now that's incorrect there's only one n but the vowels the vowels throw me off that's carbona t carbona t is what you carbonate 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 Carbonate. All right, starting off not so good. Mm-hmm. Question number two. Everybody loves math. Yeah. What is thirteen times eleven? Uh, give me a second. Thirteen times eleven. Yeah, that's what I said. Okay, I'm repeating my. Shush, shush. You don't have to repeat it back to me. The juice. I have to repeat it to myself out loud. I'm used to talking to myself. Oh. Oh, for sweet hell. 123? No, it's 143. 43. Hmm. See, I would have just done 13 times 10, which is 130, and then added 13 more. Yeah. Well, that's not how they teach you. It's it's fine. Asian kids would have got it. You're not one. So I'm not Asian. Sorry. Question number three. How many eyes are there in the word Mississippi? Three. Actually, four. I miss it. M I S S I S S I P P I. I forgot the. God. I forgot, I forgot one of the SSSIs. You are one hundred percent wrong. I mean, nothing you've said has been right. Question number four. True or false? Negative. Mutual. What? Can we do like a mutual? I'm just gonna go with both sides. You can't do that. Just like you can't decide what you're into in the bedroom you're gonna to have to select one rude no it's that's a pretty topical okay, what was what was, what was the question question number four continue true or false mm-hmm. that's the question right what true or false like that's that's a question oh my god it's like truth or dare i usually went with true so i'm just gonna go with true <laughs> It was false. That's not even a question. That was like, it's like your question. How am I supposed to know you're going to pick false? I get this with everybody that I lay that on when they don't see it coming. It's funny. What? Because they're like, okay. Uh, it's, it's a guess. Question number five. She's giving me icy dagger glares. I didn't like that question. Question number five. Name four varieties of Cap'n Crunch. Well, apparently there's a Halloween one up there. Uh-huh. There's the original, there's the berries, there's the peanut butter. The berries. The berries. Just the berries. Like, only berries. There's only berries. They have a name for it. I look for the pictures and, like, what's in it. Right, just keep going. I mean, you can name as many as you want now. I like Captain Crunch, so. Um, I'm going to go get some of that Halloween one, though. They have... Uh, I feel like they have a donut one. Unless I dreamt that. I might have dreamt it. There's a donut one. Perfect. I'm going to go get that one, too. Um, I think that's I think that's all I can remember. You just made weird kissy sounds, and I'm pretty sure Bryce just creamed his jeans. That's fine. Cream away, bud. You were thinking of Sprinkle Donut Crunch and Oops All Berries. 
Really? It's okay. Oops. I'm going to give you that one. Oops, all berries. That's what it's fucking called. There's a box fit on top of my fridge. Oh, no, it's just no, a bag. That's, that's, yeah. We have the Halloween crunch right now. Oh, that looks good. Question number six. Okay. Melissa Joan Hart. Would you? Mm, I don't know who that is. I don't know names. I, it's characters or... Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Oh, yes. Fuck also yes. known uh, for Clarissa Explains It All. Yep. So I'll, take, I'll take that answer. Because, this is how I take uh, tests in school. Because as uh, Jimmy Urine once said in an MSI song, if you're so smart, explain this, Clarissa. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Question number seven. Finish this ad slogan. Summer's Eve. Is this like a, a sexist question? Like, do you think I'm no, just supposed not. to know this? No, I just, I thought of it. While you were eating an apple, I just thought of things that were related to vaginas. Is that why you were periods. giggling upstairs? Possibly. I don't know. Jesus Christ. Also at the loud crunch of the apple at a few points. Hmm. Like, wow, she's really fucking going a ton of that apple. I told you I was hungry. Holy Christ. I don't know. Fresh? Mm. I feel like that's one of those products. Summer's Eve, fresh. That's how you think that goes? Yeah. Man, you are definitely not a kid of the 90s, even though you were born in the 90s. I don't, I don't use Summer Eve, so. Summer's Eve brings back freshness every time. See, that was like a three-part question. Right? I said finish this ad slogan. It wasn't throw in one more word. Yeah, you think as a kid in the 90s, I was paying attention to Summer Eve commercials? I fucking used to watch Cheers and Golden Girls and shit when I was in single digits. I still do. Those are good. That's good. Good shows. Jacob Wetterling was stolen when I was still in single digits. The world was a lot more serious back then. <laughs> Shit was real. Shit was real. You paid attention to douche slogans on television because you never knew when that was going to come up on a fucking trivia contest if you were eventually going to be on Double Dare in case Mark Summers decided to be wildly inappropriate with children one day. Yeah. During no. a trivia game. not You like were very house. prepared for that outcome. I was. Okay. Question number eight. Nobody ever gets this one, but it's always the same question. Oh, of course. <clears throat> Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? You motherfucker. I remember that question. Like, where where do you even get this? And I'm sure it's something you make up in your mind. It's a computer game, and then it was a TV show on PBS in the 90s. And it was a fucking awesome show. There are books, there are all kinds of media devoted to Carmen San Diego. I didn't watch PBS. There was even another cartoon called Where on Earth is Carmen San Diego. That was pretty badass, too. And it was all made... To educate children. Hmm. So again, I will ask you, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Argentina. Mm. Wrong. Salem, Massachusetts, because it's our Halloween episode and witches, bitches! You just wanted to say that part. No, I thought of that <laughs> after I came up with Salem. I'm like, how do I justify what she's doing? Oh, God. I almost said Salem, Oregon, but that wouldn't make any sense. Nope. That's oh. what a retarded person would think. Apparently. Okay, so you have two, and your all-time high score is four, so you better get these next two. Oh, there's more. Yeah, there's ten. Okay. Question number nine. How old am I? <laughs> I'm supposed to know this? Yes. Yes. Oh, my God. I thought we were friends, Ivy. Apparently, I don't need you to help me raise my children <laughs> in the tragic event of my wife's death. You only know my age because it's just very... I don't know. You you ask a lot. It's, once you reach a certain point, you don't really ask. Ouch. <laughs> I get told I'm deceivingly young looking by a lot of people. Who? Just the other day by a, a social worker at a hospital. Don't trust them. And by colleagues of mine from my former job. Many of them in their mid-twenties are like, you're how old? Hmm. How old am I? I don't even know how old the beast is. Well, the beast is 31. Oh, man. Number of the beast, 31. I think you're older. No, you're younger. So old. Man, your eyes are moving around a lot. Like your brain is like on thinking... dial-up speed processing the shit out of this question. You just have to say a number. Yeah, I think you... I feel like she's told me how many years. I feel like you're younger, though. So I'm going to go... With, man, this is hard. It's not. It's it is hard. Not. It is so hard because oh I feel God. like you're gonna judge me when I say it too because I'm supposed to know. You bitch. Right. No, that's the guilt trip that makes it funny for the audience. It's not funny. 
guys. So you can remember in distinct detail what it was like when your mom shit her pants in front of you, but you can't remember my age. No, because I don't think it's brought up very often enough for me. To... My mom has shit herself many times. It's very imprinted. Well, I've been this age since August. And then I was the number less than this age for a whole year prior. I can barely keep and up with my The year I was born has not differed once since they cleaved me from my mother's womb. It's a good good visual. Thank you. It is. I didn't want to come out. I was like, nope. Right, Look I'm at just, that thing. I'm uh-uh. just going to go. I'm going to just be safe and say 31. Mm. It's a good guess, but it's wrong. Oh, I'm, I'm sure it is. I'm 36. You're older? Yeah. It's a lie. I reference shows like Cheers and the Golden Girls. So? I know what those shows are. You know of them. Have you seen them? Yeah. In their original run when they were on TV before they were syndicated? Yeah. No. Yeah, I watched I watched Cheers and Golden Girls. Well, they were on before they ended or were in reruns. I don't know. I didn't know what reruns were until I started recording shows on my TV now. Okay, well, you're 22. Pisses you off that I know that, doesn't it? You yeah. You know mine. Ah, so, 18 minus 22, 96. Okay. Like, are you showing off your math skills? Is Golden this- Girls was over by 1996. I'm fairly confident of that. Okay. I will check it on the internet if I fucking have to. Well, that is a, maybe it was reruns, but and like shit, I said, yeah, yeah. how was I supposed to know? Golden Girls ran for September 1985 to May 1992. Suck on that you freckled, Lily White bitch. P.S. I like your glasses. Well, let's get this over with because you are limping to the finish line with an almost record-setting low. I am so I I'm on my side, so I'm I'm feeling pretty proud of myself. Okay, well, if you don't get this last one, you will set a new low point total. It's not very nice. <laughs> These things happen. I got extra credit questions in school. I feel like I should get extra credit ones now. No, it doesn't work like that. Yes, it does. Continue. Do you think you can just come in here with your sass and your fucking neck scarf and I deserve extra points because I'm a millennial and how extra, dare you make us feel less than perfect? Extra questions, Jesus not extra Christ. points. Do you want a participant ribbon too? No. Good, because I don't have any to give out. My mom threw those away anyways. Question number 10. Okay. Do you pee in the shower? Yes. Thank God. That is correct. It's only, it's correct because you pee in the shower? It's correct because smart people pee in the shower. Oh, Jesus. Three out of ten, I'm going to write Ivy, and I'm going to put it in the pile. <laughs> you got a pile. I got a pile of cards. I save my cards so I know what I've done for trivia questions so I don't repeat them. Oh, it's a lot. A lot of planning. Not really. Not really, because I just come up with this shit at random. Fair enough. Are you excited for the Blood Balls trailer? No. What about for the Clots on My Ball Bag song to drop? Nope. <laughs> those two are those are not on... Not not crazy about here because I feel like they're going to be incredibly detailed. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Maybe. Menses on uh, a scrotum are hilarious. That's going to be the starter line or? No. Okay. That would be the tagline for the song. Okay. Oh boy. Or possibly when I'm trying to shop the script for Blood Balls to various studios. <laughs> various studios. I'm holding out hope for a rebirth of New Line Cinema. Interact with the show on Twitter at Blumpkin Show. That is at Blumpkin Show. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash group slash Blumpkin. And friends, we are on iTunes and on Podbean at blumpkinshow.podbean.com. For original songs, please go to soundcloud.com slash Blumpkin Music. I'm the Reverend Johnny Blumpkin. And I'm Ivy. Who looks puzzled. <laughs> I just don't understand why you had a smile at the end. Good night. And now, for the moment no one has been waiting for. After 111 episodes of laziness. Blumpkin and Friends presents, the extended trailer for, Blood Balls. We're also following breaking news. I never used to be this way. 
was stabbed over and over again in broad daylight. As I was going to the store and looked, and then they said that um, this couple got killed and um, stabbed. They cut me off and took my parking spot at Costco. New at 6, a man wearing next to nothing, harassing women in a park, and police are trying to find him. You know, I've never been very good at breaking the ice with women. He was stabbed to death inside his apartment. Related to a fatal stabbing. They didn't ask me to stab stab. We want the killer. We want justice. They made fun of my shoes. I like the low-cut Chuck Taylor All-Stars. Fuck you, they had it coming. Now, after invading that room, the man apparently jumped off the hotel's second-story balcony onto a car. I had just gotten done chugging a four logo and stuffing an eight ball up my ass. Cocaine's a hell of a drug. The suspect was at the intersection and stabbed her. I heard rustling up in the bushes. Watch as the nightmare unfolds. Neighbors out here are absolutely disgusted by this. They are on alert tonight and now police want to know who this man is. Oh, they're going to learn my name and they're going to know my pain. And they're also going to find out why I've got blood all over my genitals. 47 PD, he's stolen my unit. He's taken off uh, eastbound. Okay, full disclosure, I may have stolen a police car. But in my defense, Uber is fucking expensive. From words to looks, reactions of repulsion. It's disgusting. Watching this video of a man attacking a woman, not with a gun or knife, police say, but a bag of feces. It was actually a bag of malted milk balls. She had taken forever in front of me in line at the bank, and they had melted in the hot car. They were approached by an individual with a knife who struck very rapidly. He exposed himself, and he just began masturbating. I tried to hand her $15 first. Prosecutors are calling this attack calculated and vicious. And customers and restaurant workers couldn't believe what they saw. The man trashed the place, knocking down signs, throwing boxes, and punching holes in walls and ceilings. I didn't know the McRib was seasonal. A massive manhunt tonight for the suspect who stabbed and killed a 17-year-old boy. He asked me if I ever played Fortnite, and I said, no, I'm more of a Street Fighter guy. Then he laughed in my face and started telling me how he thought that Ken and Ryu were gay. She was attacked by a stranger who took her for a wild ride, a naked man. Man, jumped into her sunroof and started beating her. Walking to the corner to go to the corner mailbox, and I saw a man lying in the street in his yard. You know, someone like that is, is walking around harassing people with his pants off. He should be locked up. That last guy kind of sounded like Mort Goldman. Stabbed to death on campus Sunday night. It was rush week, and my frat brothers wanted to know if I was really hardcore. A man pants down, defecating on the hood of a car that was parked in this driveway. Oh, for Christ, it, it was a Toyota Prius. Get over yourself. A woman ran from her home and called police after finding a naked man in her bedroom touching himself. The window was open. And just five minutes earlier, she had been in the shower singing Shania Twain's Come On Over. Google the lyrics. He was plunging the knife at the woman, and she's screaming, help me, help me. And I just stood here when I was frozen, screaming. Okay, seriously, I'm going to read you some of the lyrics to this song. Come on over. Come on in. You can unwind. Take a load off your mind. The bitch was pretty much daring me to do it. Police say this one is considered to be armed with a knife and dangerous. Nobody ever took me seriously. She never took me seriously. That bitch treated me like I was just some plaything. Like I was a joke to her. A 28-year-old man died after accidentally stabbing himself in the groin with a sword. Okay, that one was not technically my fault. He was LARPing in the park and wielding an actual sword. And then he saw me, got surprised, tripped over a tree branch. Wrong place, wrong time, I guess. Shit happens. Well, one was your emergency. I just woke up and I demanded my bedroom. That one was supposed to be a Tinder date, and the girl got the numbers backwards at the end of her address. She transfixed the three and the five. I went to the wrong townhome unit. Could have happened to anybody. Police are saying they've received a multitude of calls and tips. There is a manhunt underway now for a suspect. I mean, you stab a few people, you poop on some stuff, and you masturbate in a few people's houses or in front of them, and... Next thing you know, they're coming after you like you stole a small Cessna plane, flew into an unlocked portion of the city map, and then crash-landed on a military base like it's GTA Vice City. Blood Ball.